The world's largest children's museum is right here in Indianapolis. Not only are we the largest, we think we're the best, but it is enormous. Our uh, campus is almost half a million square feet. We have five levels of indoor experiences and we have seven and a half acres outdoors. The Children's Museum of Indianapolis is the major leagues of children's museums. It is by far the biggest, the baddest, the best. There's very few institutions in the world like the Children's Museum of Indianapolis that are so deeply committed to telling meaningful, influential, inspiring stories. So being a part of that group, being part of a, a team that has that kind of creative horsepower, has that kind of commitment, it's just an opportunity you don't get every day. So we're working on Nobel Peace Prize winners, we're working on dinosaurs, whatever it is. Uh, we know that experience is gonna be world class. We're standing in the power of children making a difference, and it opened in 2007 featuring Anne Frank, Ruby Bridges, and Ryan White as three children who left an incredible legacy. Each of them faced racism, discrimination, our kids that really did change the world in some way, and we looked in the last few years to a fourth story. After a lot of research and conversations, we knew the answer had to be Malala Yousafzai. And she is absolutely incredible. Nobel Peace Prize winner, she went through incredibly traumatic events with the Taliban um, in her home in Pakistan. She's an advocate for girls' education and has been all her life from the very beginning. And so the opportunity to tell her story was unbelievable. We worked directly with Malala's family, um, had the chance to interact with her father and with her family foundation, and Malala herself was um, a part of approving this experience, the first of its kind, the first permanent exhibit in the world focused on Malala's story. We started writing the script um, at the Children's Museum a few years ago to be able to put it in front of some focus groups. There is a significant challenge inherent in Malala's story, and it's the fact that she was, she was shot by the Taliban. It is a touchy subject. I mean, it's a dynamic where you want kids to understand the reality of what she faced because it gives context to why her story is so important. And so they didn't want to leave those pieces off the table. They wanted to make sure that we covered the realness of her story, but in a way that kids wouldn't be scared or be nervous. We have to end on a note of inspiration. The museum team already had a vision for what they wanted for the story. They came to us with an initial script. They even had some storyboards, initial animatic. Um, so they had a beautiful vision for what this piece needed to be. Uh, but they came to us in a very collaborative sense to help contribute and decide, well, how are we going to bring this thing truly to life? We went through the process starting at the very beginning and saying, what do we want people to feel? What do we want them to see, hear, and experience overall? One of the key factors in that was creating an overall experience matrix that was a document that we could contribute to collaboratively. So every line was in reference to some piece of the overall show. It was what are we seeing in the visuals? What are we hearing in the sound? What's happening in the light show? What's happening in the atmosphere surrounding it? What's the mood and tone that we want to have from color scripts all the way through uh, to the final music and product and composition and sound design. Another big challenge for all of this is that we did it all virtually. We didn't have a chance to meet our clients until it was all complete. This happened during the pandemic, and that created some really interesting dynamics in trying to review the work as we went along. We worked within 3D models. We did a lot of previs. We did a lot of animations in advance of doing the final animations, just so that we could communicate intent throughout the process so that the team felt confident in what the solution was going to be. Because of the legwork that Dimensional Innovations did to ask questions, understand, take feedback, that's why we chose to work with them again. The experience of working on Malala with the museum team was so incredibly gratifying, and luckily, another one came right up, and we had the chance to work on dinosaurs. We had a lot of lessons learned uh, as far as how to organize content, how to organize material, with a lot of eyeballs. Uh, producers, animators, writers, paleontologists, uh, marketing. It takes a lot of organization and a lot of focus um, to not drop any eggs, no pun intended for dinosaurs. Talking about these scientific specimens and, and relaying information, we knew that there were a lot of stories we could tell, but we settled on the question, how did these dinosaurs get so big? The overall message of Dinosphere is fossils are clues that tell us about dinosaurs. So in this case, we're like, how can these fossils tell us about how big these dinosaurs got? So the whole scene we've created is this herd of sauropods 
walking through a dry riverbed because we're in this ramp area too, so it just lends itself to that. So we've created these huge murals around us that depict the forest around it, and you see this vast open floodplain on the other side of the dinosaurs. We worked really closely with the Dimensional Innovations team to figure out how to make that the most powerful and succinct and visually stunning piece that really wrapped around the visitors. Our team had come up with that script. We knew those points that we wanted to hit. We had our team of paleontologists you know, make sure that we were getting that science correct, but then bringing in that extension of dimensional innovations was really integral to thinking about how we were really going to make this happen. We knew what we wanted to say, but we weren't sure how that was really gonna be possible on this landscape. We actually developed two shows. The more scientific show is all fun for the, the paleontologist and the more discerning dinosaur fan. But we also developed a second show, which is called The Interpreter Show. A little more fun, a little more interactive, but that show was a very different tone, which had an actor, a, a, an interpreter, would be up on stage and behind the dinosaurs, in front of the screen, uh, kind of interacting with the audience. It's really, really cool. It really sort of changes our work. You know, we have been sort of coming to a more, a sort of more highly technical um, interpretive experiences over the last four or five years. And this Sound and Light show, as well as the one in Malala, really represent um, a kind of new breed of programming. And so in Malala, it gives us the chance to have an emotional impact that we're not really able to reach with just the actor. The ability to hear Malala's voice, to see footage from her life, gives that this completely different emotional impact on the visitor. And in a different way, this does the same thing. We're able to have a paleontologist in training go back in time and have a conversation with one of the world's famous paleontologists from the 1800s. One thing that we were really excited to be able to do with this particular show is enhance the captioning and interpretation. We incorporated an ASL interpreter visual into this in addition to the open captioning that exists in the rest of our work and to work through what that looked like with Dimensional Innovations to make sure that we were meeting the needs of those visitors just made this much richer. I remember when I was entering the process, I was a little unsure of exactly what DI was capable of and going on that journey and then sort of hearing what we were wanting to accomplish and then they would say, oh cool, here's these different options, here's these different ways you can accomplish it. And as we were moving through the process, we sort of got to the end of that and it was just, um, this ability to kind of really work and frame this kind of path together. So it really was a partnership that kind of get to the goals and dreams that we wanted for our visitors. It was a great process.